Asphalt paved roads help get you from point A to point B in a safe and efficient manner. Without you even realizing, asphalt has paved a way of opportunity for you. Pun intended. America has utilized asphalt so much that if you took all of its asphalt paved roads, you could circle the earth 150 times. That's 3,735,150 miles of open road with population growing and the demand for new roads continuing to skyrocket. Just how is asphalt made? And can we keep up with the demand of it? Asphalt is composed of three key ingredients, aggregates, vitamin, and filler materials. Aggregates provide the bulk and strength to asphalt concrete. They act as a rocky skeletal structure for asphalt. Aggregates account for over 90% of an asphalt mixture by weight. The most commonly used aggregates are crushed stone, gravel, and sand. The size and angularity of the aggregates are important. High quality aggregates ensure durability. Vitamin is produced through the distillation of crude oil during petroleum refining. The black oil's viscosity allows it to serve as an effective binder. Vitamin holds the aggregates together when mixed and also helps asphalt concrete resist weathering once paved. Fill is like stone dust or Portland cement fill voids between aggregates that vitamin cannot. They improve cohesion and reduce temperature susceptibility. The resulting increased density grants better durability and strength. Once the needed materials have been collected, the asphalt production process begins. Different aggregates are fed into hoppers, otherwise known as cold feeders. The aggregate used is determined by the goal of the asphalt in production. The rule is the larger the aggregate, the higher the load bearing capacity. For example, a freeway using variable speed belt conveyors at the bottom of the cold feeders, different combinations of aggregate are extracted and moved to the next step in the process based on the current job at hand. The first stop for the aggregates is a screen or pre-separator. This is used to ensure any unwanted contaminants are removed from the finished ideal asphalt. As the wanted aggregate is separated, it is moved by another conveyor belt to the drying drum. In order for the aggregates to bind effectively with the vitamin at a later stage, it needs to first be dried and heated. The most efficient and cost-effective way to do so is to use the drying drum that includes a large burner embedded inside of it. Aggregate is conveyed in the dryer, starting the drying process. The further into the drying drum you travel, the intensity of the heat grows. As the moisture inside of the aggregate is expelled during the heating process, it is forced out, traveling through a ventilation system used to collect dust that may be in the air. Remember, dust fills the voids in asphalt where vitamin cannot, so it's pivotal to save this material for later. To give context as to the force of wind in the drying drum, steam and dust can exit the drum at speeds of 50 to 60 miles per hour. Imagine you are standing in a hurricane. Now imagine those winds are a minimum of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. That is definitely not a place you would like to find yourself. The process from when aggregate enters the drying drum to reaching ideal temperatures and dryness only takes around three to five minutes to complete. Remember how I mentioned the demand for asphalt being higher than ever? Well, to aid with that demand, old and damaged asphalt that has been removed from roads can be recycled and added back to newer materials to form new asphalt. This older recycled asphalt is called RAP, which stands for reclaimed asphalt pavement. Just as before, older asphalt is fed in the feeders, moves by conveyor belt to a screen or pre-separator, and once the ideal asphalt has been sorted, it moves to the drying drum to be heated and dried with the aggregate, mixing to form one compound. Once the RAP and new aggregate have reached ideal temperatures together, vitamin and filler are both introduced to the mix. The drying bin continues to spin until the asphalt mixture is ready to be deployed. The completed mix now is transferred to the storage silos by conveyor belt. Most plants have several silos, so different mixes can be stored for multiple jobs. The silos are often heated and insulated so the mixes can be stored for extended periods of time. When the time has come, asphalt is dispensed from the specific silo onto a work truck and taken to the job. The asphalt industry generates $31.5 billion each year, which trust me, that is a lot of zeros. And with demand growing, recycling older roads to replace them is becoming more of a need. By reusing recycled asphalt, road developers in the USA are able to save millions of dollars in costs and taxpayer money. And with the price of oil continuing to rise, the solution is recycled asphalt. 
the need for asphalt will not go away as it is the perfect material to pave our roads with. Asphalt provides great traction for tires, is quiet to drive on, more water resistant than other materials, and takes a relatively short amount of time after it's set before it's ready to use. And there you have it. Now you know how asphalt is made. 